All right, y'all, we're going to do uh, my Logic Session breakdown for uh, my song, Coming Home to You. Uh, I had some of you guys uh, curious about my recording process and sort of what I do. So here's here's kind of how this worked. Um, let's see if I can uh, get this to show you here. All right, so I started with, uh, I pretty much, I, got, I started with layering out like the form. So it, one of the cool things in Logic is you have this bar up here where um, I can kind of put the whole form. So I kind of did like an intro, verse, pre-chorus, all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm not even sure if these names are right. I just, that's just where the sections were at and the names are sort of irrelevant to me. You can do cool stuff like color coding them and, um, and all that, which I just kind of did for fun. It's not really necessary. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. But I was having fun that day, so um, I did that. Um, you can see I got a, a vocal part here, a background part, a guitar, acoustic guitar. These pink ones are acoustic guitars, and these uh, purple ones here are my electric guitar parts. I've got an organ, I've got a bass uh, track, I've actually got two bass tracks. Um, I did a different bass sound for different sections, and then I've got this drum part. Um, and actually, if I were to break this, uh, open this up, you can see that I actually have a lot more tracks. Um, here, let me make this uh, bigger so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, so these are all my throwaway tracks right here. So I have actually all together, I have all these vocal tracks. These were edits that I had done trying to edit the vocals together, getting, uh, getting rid of silence and um, just kind of cleaning things up a bit before I mixed them down into a, a proper track. Um, I have a bunch of different guitar parts, things I had tried, different miking uh, techniques to get what I wanted. Um, these were scratch tracks. If you're not familiar with scratch track, what I do a lot of times when I'm writing is I'll lay down a track with just the basic guitar and vocal um, in time to like the, the metronome or drummer, and then I layer all the parts around that, and that track doesn't actually stay in the recording. Uh, I just sort of use it as a framework to layer all the parts and uh, the arrangement, and then I record over it with the actual, uh, I do the acoustic guitar and the vocals separately then. But um, in the beginning here, this was just all guitar and vocal. So I have a ton of those. I have a ton of guitar, electric guitar parts that I was trying out, different amps. Um, in Logic, you can simulate amps, and it's really cool. Um, I did the same thing with organ. I went through some different organ sounds to try to find the right organ that I wanted. I did some different bass sounds. Um, trying to get, um, I liked, I really liked this muted bass for one section and the stinger bass for another. And then I had done several different drum parts too. I had th these initial ones here. Um, well, this one was just kind of like a, a click track that I was playing to. It just had the basic groove. And then I went in and I was able to kind of edit that to get the exact feel and the exact groove and the exact uh, drum part that I wanted. But you can see here that altogether I had 103 tracks. Um, I didn't use all those. I only ended up using these 13. Um, so anyway, one of the cool things I did, the first thing I did, like I said, was the vocals and stuff. After that, I went, usually the first thing I do is I lay out the drum groove that I want. And one of the things I really love in Logic um, is the drummer function. Although you can see here, this is what we call MIDI. So I, I made it a virtual instrument so that I could uh, try to attempt to make it sound more real. Um, but in the actual drum part here, you can see I initially used drummer. If I unmute this, if it will let me unmute that, it may not. Anyway, it gives you a drummer inside of Logic that you can actually create the beats you want. Um, and you can select where you want the hi-hat, the percussion, you can select the swing and the amount of fills. I didn't do a lot of fills on this particular thing because um, it didn't seem to fit it. You can also adjust the fill, like here I'm kind of pushing the beat a little bit and I added some ghost notes in. And, um, so, and this little can dial here allows me to make the beat. If I go up here, it makes it uh, louder. Uh, over here is more complicated beat and over here on this side is a little more simplified beat. Um, so in this one, I had kind of, you know, done sort of somewhere in between. Uh, let's see here. Let me go in to the actual logic session. And well, first, let's play a little bit of it so you can hear it. This is the actual tracks as they came out. Well, as I recorded them, if I push command two here, 
it will bring up my mixing board and you can see that I whoops I forgot to hide all those tracks <laughs> let's, let's go back yeah let's just hide those okay command 2 so now this has all my effects that I added on these on the EQ. I did various EQ for the vocal. I started with a, a preset on some of these. And uh, and then I tweaked them to, to, to take out uh, signals that I didn't like or say add signals that I did like. In this case over here, I, I cut around 200 hertz, uh, about 2.5 dB. And then I over here, I raised uh, 1200 Hertz at a, about 2B dB and then I got a little slope over here so a lot of times with logic you can find a starting place uh, just by um, you can find a starting place just by just by using a preset you can find a starting place and then from there you can kind of tweak it to get exactly what you want and and that's basically exactly what I did um, let's see what we got here. Um, in the mixing board is really cool. Uh, we have these things called sends. So you can see where I sent uh, these effects to different places. These are what we call buses. And my bus channels actually show up down over here. So I have like a drum bus. Uh, this one's called a acoustic guitar. I have a, my, uh, vo my vox is like my vocal delay and my vocal reverb. I have I do what I, I did what I call a submix in this case, which kind of I link a lot of the tracks through the submix uh, certain uh, in, groups of instruments, and that way that I can control the individual volume and maybe add effects specifically to that. In this case, um, I was using this this plugin that I love by Analog Obsession, and it's called the Chenev or Chenev. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it, but basically it emulates. Uh, an old school Neve channel strip off of a like a console, uh, old school console. So it gives you a lot of like the distortion, natural distortion. It has a lot of control over. You can do like EQ and stuff like that in it. I didn't do a whole lot of EQ with it. I used it to add some natural, um, well, not really distortion, but saturation. So it. The saturation is uh, a warmer distortion, usually associated with like older recordings. Like you'll hear a lot of the uh, stuff from the 60s and 70s that was recorded on analog gear will have a lot of that. So I tried to create sort of an analog chain to emulate those sounds, even though uh, it, I'm not really doing that. <laughs> it's all digital. But anyway, I did use the compressor over here, and the compressor will kind of kind of balances out the highs and the lows. So it'll if you take take an instrument, for example. It, it will take the highest sounds and the lowest sounds and it sort of squash them together, compressing them. So it gives you a little bit more of a balance. You can do it to also create feel and parts. I do, I, you do that a lot. But in this for this particular one, I was just using it to kind of get a, a general uh, sound that I wanted and a general uh, clarity in all the parts. Let me go ahead and close out of this logic session I'm gonna this I'm, this was all my so this was all my um, writing the parts and arranging them and editing and then I went in and I actually opened up I actually dumped all these into another session to create a mix um, so if I go over here to logic I think I called it yep here it is coming home to you mix one so when I go to mix one We'll open that up. Don't save. There we go. All right, let's expand this out. All right, so this is my actual session that I did for the mixing. It looks basically the same. I pretty much just copied it, but um, what I did do was I got rid of, I, I usually kind of go through these different stages. So. Uh, the first stage for me is like miking, recording the parts and arranging and I don't really worry about uh, like all the compression and all the effects and things like that. I just try to get the parts the way I want them and then after that I go in and I will kind of do that in a different phase which usually I, I kind of call it like sound sculpting. You can do what it, call it whatever you want. Some people call it mixing but to me mixing is kind of after that. 
So um, in this stage, I'm, I'm, I was dialing in like the exact electric guitar tones that I wanted um, and things like that and getting the miking placement to, the, to my, my taste. Um, so you can see I did, I, I do go keep this thing and go into the mixing phase. So once I get done with that, like during the sound sculpting phase, um, I, used a, I used a little EQ um, for the male voice to kind of get that to, to separate out. When you EQ the different instruments, um, you'll find that if you don't EQ, all the instruments just get really muddy in the mix and you can't really hear shit. So <laughs> what I do is I go in and EQ them and I'll, I will take like, for example, a good example of this would be bass and drums, right? A lot of times on drums and bass, they're in the same register so if you if you don't EQ, they the bass will tend to kind of get muddied up by the bass drum, especially because they're really low. So a lot of times what I'll do is like on this bass EQ here for this first section, I've kind of I've kind of dropped some some 80 hertz here, about 3 dB, and uh, but over here I've boosted these signals, right? But if I were to go into the actual drum EQ. I can find it. Um, let's see, maybe I have to open that track up to do it. Let's go back to command one here. Oh, you know what? I already did it. That's why I can't find it. <laughs> I already did it. Um, I forgot. So when I'm doing drums, the way I make these things sound real, this leads me into a cool thing that you can do. The way I make try to make the drums sound realistic is, I showed you before that I record them in the drummer, right? Um, and I kind of create the parts and I can actually, but then I can tailor them more. So if I go in then and dump, when I go into the mixing phase or into my sound sculpting phase, I'll, if I click on this part, you can see these are all MIDI notes, right? And what this allows me to do is it keeps my part that I had intact but it allows me to draw in and uh, other notes or get rid of notes that I don't want. So I can actually really write the part exactly the way I want. So you can see here, like if I click on this, um, it kind of makes a sound, right? I can hear the hi-hat there. And these are different volumes. You'll notice the color is different on all these, right? So part of what makes it sound real is I go in and I actually change them all so they're not exactly the same volume so it sounds like a real drummer, right? A real drummer's not going to hit the snare exactly the same on every single hit. So you got to kind of, to emulate that, to get it to sound that way, you have to go in and actually change that. So on these uh, MIDI parts, I, I can do all that. And I went in and I created some cymbal fills and stuff like that as well in here that I won't go into too much detail on because it's probably not as interesting to you as it was to me, but I enjoy doing it. But anyway, that's how I get my drum sounds. I'll dump them in, go to MIDI. I can also, there's a feature in within this that allows me to, um, whoop, I didn't mean to do that. It allows me to, um, hu it's called humanize. So it will actually allow me to go in and, and make slight imperfections within the drum kit that are, are not going to not imperfections to the degree it's gonna, like it's a mistake, but imperfections that a, a human being would have when they play, right? Like not hitting every note. And so it actually kind of automatically does some of this uh, volume adjustment as part of that. And some of the notes will be slightly shorter than or whatever. And then I can go in, and I fine tweak them. And I, I, I spend a lot of time a lot of, on the drums trying to get them to sound as organic and real as I possibly can. Um, so anyway, so that's my drums. From there, um, oh, and these hidden tracks down here, these were my mix edits. So I, I did uh, some different things to edit them. I go through gain staging and stuff like that, which I'll get into in another video. Um, so there's a lot, of, there's like a bunch of processes that I go through basically to do that. Uh, but anyway, let's get into my mix board here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I did a bunch of EQ. All this up here at the top is my different EQs. We'll play a little bit of it here so we can see what this bad boy sounds like. Whoop. There we go. Red 
down a little bit so we can hear all right so just got to check I'm gonna adjust this volume a little bit see how that works for y'all all right so here we go so now we got into this um, I mentioned I like to do my analog chain when I'm mixing. Um, so on the vocals, I use that uh, channel EQ. I use this uh, just a stock Logic compressor, um, and this was just to sort of get the vocals. Uh, I had gone in initially and edited them down, took out the silence, and then I also will go in and tweak out of each track I'll, I'll, uh, or each section that I've cut I'll tweak the individual volume to get everything as consistent as I can and then I added another compressor and this is what uh, we call serial compression meaning that you got more than one so one compressor is kind of bringing the volume to where I want it the other one I'm sort of using to create a little sustain I used a de-esser here to get rid of the S sounds um, so they wouldn't be so harsh. You can go in. de is really great if you're recording because you can cut out a lot of the, the, the S sounds and P and all the stuff that's going to kind of pop in the microphone. And um, you can just specifically target those uh, frequencies and, and cut them down a little bit, drop the volume on them. It basically functions like a compressor, but it, but it only does it for those specific sounds that you don't want. Um, so it's pretty awesome. This thing is a really awesome, this Clang Hot... Klanghelm IVG12 is a pretty awesome saturation thing, so I added a little bit of saturation, which is kind of like distortion, except for the saturate. The difference between them is distortion kind of distorts the sound, right? Um, so a lot of people will, if you're a guitar player, you'll think of distortion as like a distortion pedal. Saturation, on the other hand, um, when you're doing distortion, it's actually destroying the signal and taking out frequencies. But when you go and start using saturation, it's actually adding frequencies that you didn't have in there in a complementary way if you use it right. So I used a little bit of that. Um, I love this plugin. It's called Fresh Air. And it does exactly that. It just kind of adds like air. Like if I isolate this track here, I'll just isolate the vocals so you can kind of hear what I did here with this. Here we go. We're getting into the verse. Red light thunder. So if I take and turn this off, rolling out across the sky. It's real subtle. I didn't. I do very small tweaks to things as I'm doing it, but you can hear a slight difference, right? Pull me under. Here's off. Roll my heart Here's on. Time. See how it adds that kind of airiness to my voice. Um, so that's what I use that for, just to kind of create like a little bit more depth. Let me show you the same thing with the distortion or saturation. It's real subtle, but if you listen, if you're listening, you should listen on headphones. You won't hear this through a phone speaker or TV. So it kind of warms it up, right? So there's on, here's off. Taking on the road and traveling alone. And here's on. But my thoughts belong to you. Um, all right, let's get into. Let's get into one of the some of the other instruments real quick, and I'll try to explain to y'all what I did. Okay, so go back to my mixing board. So I did that on those effects on both vocals. There's a background vocal part. Uh, the guitars, there's actually a crap ton of guitar parts on this song. I think I did seven parts, but uh, let's take a look. We got uh, guitar. I did a DI guitar part as well, um, where I used the pickup inside of my guitar. Um, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven guitar parts, three electric and four acoustic. So this one is just... The acoustic guitar, right? 
which was actually like a finger picking part that I did. Make sure I got this thing up enough you can hear it. Yeah, it seems good. Okay. Yeah, so it's just a finger picking guitar part. I added a little EQ to it. I had already had, before I went to this phase, had already done all the editing on it that I needed to do. Um, and this was kind of what I wanted, right? And I have it panned. This is panning. So the panning is like where it sits in the speaker. Like if I put this over here, you'll hear it kind of go to that side. Or if I put it over here, it'll go to, the, to my left, right? Or my right, your left. So I have those in the middle. The DI is just uh, the same exact part, but I recorded it kind of through that, uh, recorded it through the guitar. And I have these routed through this bus, this acoustic bus, okay? So if I were want to hear them both, I have some other parts in there too. Let me get rid of mute those so you can hear. So here's both. And the reason I did that is because, as I you heard from my mistake, um, I wanted to add a little more compression to it. So I added two more compressors and another fresh air to kind of give those space. Um, if I open this up, you can kind of hear, if I turn this off, sounds a little different. Here's off, here's on, right? So it adds a little breath, a little air into the, uh, into the sound. I used another um, analog t uh, tape uh, emulation compressor. Same thing here, if I turn it off, sounds like that, and here's on. It's real subtle, so I like to do really small, subtle changes, but stacked on top of each other, so that's why I'm using multiple compressors. I find that if I do a big move all at one time, it, you can really risk um, messing up the sound you're going for. But if I do really subtle changes, it, I get really good results that way. So that's just kind of how I do it. Same thing here. And I can actually turn these off on this thing too. So if I turn everything off, that was the original sound going into the mixing phase. And then, I added this compressor, then I added this compressor to it, and then I added the fresh air. It's real subtle, but it made a real difference in the way it cut through the mix and all that. Um, all right, so the other guitar parts I had, here's the rest of the whole song, but let's go in, we'll isolate these bad boys. Red light the so I layered a another guitar part over the top of that and it doesn't kick in here for until right here let's go zoom up to this part all right so here we go so I added kind of this like cross picking pattern sort of a bluegrass inspired pattern to sort of counter uh, counter guitar part to that guitar part, right? So if I mute the original, uh, this is what it is by itself. And then it's running through that same uh, acoustic guitar bus that I did. So I have those same compressor and fresh air on that. So it's just a little picking part, right? By itself, it's not really anything too special. But when I put these together, it's got a pretty full sound, and I just thought it sounded really pretty. So I layered that in there. Now, I added some other stuff into this. So we got the, the drums you heard, which is really cool in Logic with the drums too. Even after I converted it to the MIDI and did all the humanizing features and stuff, right? Um, if I open this up, you can see that there is actually a track as if this was a real drum kit. So I have, uh, it acts as though there's a mic for everything. So you have like a front mic for the bass drum, you have a front, uh, a bottom or a back mic for the bass drum, 
Uh, you have in and out mics basically. Uh, there's a top snare, bottom snare. Um, you can see there here, I have the hi-hat, I have a tom high, tom mid, tom low. And then there's even like room mics and like leak. And the leak is really cool because um, even though this is a digital drum that I am creating, that's a leak is something you would get in like a real recording with real drums. So it sounds realistic. Leak is like um, if you re were recording drums, uh, real drums, and you were, had a mic on the snare, the mic from the snare is going to pick up a little bit of the mic, the sound from the hi-hat. Um, and it's also going to pick up that snare and it, and it might pick up anything else around that too, right? Like you might get a little bit of the toms or something bleeding in there. And that's what the leak is. And this, you can emulate this. Um, now I didn't use all these. I didn't use the shaker and the hand claps and all that crap. But anyway, that's what I, but so I go in and I actually mix these drums individually too. So you can see all these levels um, are different. And this is like the volume of each individual instrument, these faders right here. I can move all these like up or down however I want. So there's the drums. Uh, let's see here. Um, so those were the acoustic guitar parts. And then I got these electric guitar parts, which I also routed to a, well, I didn't actually route them to a guitar bus. What I, that, that, these are going to the sub, uh, the sub mix. All right, no, they're actually not. Uh, whoops, I'm, I'm on, oh wait. Yeah, they are, I was gonna say. Yeah, they're going to the submix. So you can see right here on this that bus 10 is selected. And bus 10 over here, when I go to that, if I can, there it is. Bus 10 is actually my submix. And that's where I, so I routed a lot of instruments to the submix, most of the rhythm section. Um, I think you can see my, uh, my all my electric guitar parts here. My vocals are going. Both of my vocals are going to the submix. I have my um, organ going to the submix, and then I have these other things, bass and stuff, going to to something different. Um, so, that, but so I have some of the I have certain instruments in a certain category going there, and that's just so I could control the overall volume of those and get the the, the balance that I wanted between like the bass, the drums. Um, and everything else. So I kind of adjust them in multiple ways. Like I've got these levels here where I'm adjusting the volume that I want. On this, uh, on the background vocals, you can see I've panned them too. So I, I have certain things coming out of certain speakers like, um, whoop, let's get up to where the, let's go up here where we can, I'll show you where the background. So here's the background vocals is this track right here. And if I play from there, and I just solo that, you can hear that's coming out of uh, out of the left speaker. So I have it panned all the way over here. So you won't be able to hear this without headphones, but that's basically what it's doing. It's moving around. Taking on the road and traveling alone. But my and you'll also hear there's a crazy reverb on it. So I'm routing that through to a reverb bus um, and a delay. But specifically, this one is a background. And I, I'm using a free plugin that I found called Valhalla, which is awesome, super massive. And I'm use, I use, ended up using this particular setup because it gives you just this crazy um kind of flowing like water sound almost so anyway so those are some of the things i added there electric guitars if i stop and go back to the beginning i did three different electric parts this one is just the rhythm part i think which comes in right here. So that's my um, my rhythm. And all it is is just kind of a power chord, <laughs> sort of uh, power chord sound, real simple. And I just wanted it in the background to, to kind of create a contrasting rhythm. So by itself, it's not very interesting, right? But when I put that in here, you can really kind of hear what it does. It's just subtly in the background. So that was one. 
The other guitar part I have was these kind of chords that I've layered and I'm just sort of strumming and they're just sort of ambient chords and I pan those hard left. Um, these ones I left right in the middle, the, the rhythm part and this uh, other electric guitar. And then I have this part right here, which is kind of more of a picking part. that one is this one. Let me make these a little bigger. So I kind of got that, right? But when I blend them all together, you get the full sound of the song. So I have a ton of guitar parts layered there. The bass... So it's really simple. I have two bass, um, two bass parts. Whoop. So I have this one is the section one bass. If I come back here, here we go. It's just quarter notes, real simple. Right. Come on, stupid thing. That didn't fit. Now, right here, it's going to switch. There's silence there, and right here, it's going to switch to the other part, the other bass track. And there, and so this is more of like an open string sound, right? And then it goes back to this part, which I. So those two are kind of playing it out of each other, but I was using two different sounds to try to to try to get that to work. So if I were to let's see if I follow here, so you can see now it's on it's playing this one because there's this straight line means that there's no sound playing there right now, and then it's going to come back up here and start playing this other part again. So that's why I have two different bass tracks. It's, they were just two different sounds that I wanted to kind of come in and out of everything. And in the context of the song, they sort of change the feel of each part. And so I, I enjoyed that. Now I also have, after the guitar and the bass, if I were just, here's just the drums by themselves. And if I open these up, you can see these are all, these are the tracks that I'm using. But, um, let's see if it'll let me show you here. And now you'll see right here, these breaks, that these little cuts that I've had, these little sections, are because I'm using slightly different variations on those parts. And that's t um, to enhance, like this one I switched to the ride symbol so that I could get a little bit of a different feel. This is right here on this section. I switch the part. I, I switch the part again. And that way you can it kind of changes the feel as I'm going through the song. So I really spent a lot of time on that, kind of trying to dial in the exact drum sound to fit the, the sections of the song that I wanted them to fit. All right, so we also have organ. Let me go back to the beginning here. So the organ starts over here. Let's do this. Now this was not a real organ. This was also a MIDI instrument that I recorded within Logic and I dialed in the sounds that I wanted. I don't have, I do know how to play piano and um, so I kind of understand keys. But actually for this, oddly enough, I used my keyboard uh, on my computer to actually play it. I didn't use a, uh, a MIDI controller like most people do. I used the keys of my, com my um, computer. If I do, let's see, is it option K? Nope, that's not what I want, hold on. Yeah, so Command-K here, you can see it brings up a little keyboard. 
and these are related these notes it's clicking are actually what I'm playing um, and so I can all the, the notes on your keyboard on your um, keypad of your computer you can actually correlate to the keys of a piano and that's actually how I played it and then I went back and tweaked it in within the MIDI file to kind of get it more the way I wanted um, this one though you'll see it looks like an audio file and that's because I actually bounced it down into an audio file later once I had it exactly where I want it I converted it from a MIDI file into a audio file which is another cool thing that you can do within logic and the reason I did that is because I wanted to one I wanted to add some effects and stuff to it um, so I added some EQ I cut out some low end and, and some high end um, this is a low pass filter and a high pass filter over on these sides here and I didn't do a whole lot of EQ with it but I did a little bit uh, I did another channel EQ that boosted that I where I cut these frequencies and raised these I have a couple cuts here this one's around is the 1900 Hertz about 1 DB this one is 31 uh, 3100 Hertz I boosted about 2 DB and those were just to kind of get it to cut through the mix I wanted and I and then I pan this one hard right um, so you'll see I have I try to complement things when I'm panning you know it's like the background vocals are 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 hard left and then but then I have one of the guitar parts is hard right and one of the guitar parts is hard left so I try to keep those things balanced where I have the same uh, same number of instruments on each side so that they're and I like to do wide there I very rarely occasionally I will do things like uh, smaller than that like instead of going all the way to 59 here on these but I just I, pre I prefer that wide sound because it gives me just this huge sound it sounds like all the instruments are kind of spread out so I I kind of do like a left right center setup in my mind and I you know th I think about where the band is in my head you know like if I was on stage the guitar player and singers in the middle might have the lead guitar player over here um, bass players over here drums is kind of behind me and so I'm thinking of kind of a three-dimensional space in my mind when I'm mixing this and um, so I'm thinking left and right and, and and not only that but how far left and right the instruments are right like I might have the bass player here and then um, maybe if I had a horn section or something they'd be way over there so I, I'll change that based on that three-dimensional space and also forward and backward in the mix so I might want certain things I want to be more up front and certain things I want to be kind of in the middle and certain things more back generally I like to have the vocal the lead vocal is kind of like more right up front is where I like to put it. Um, not always, but that's just generally where I tend to do it. Whereas like the background vocals, you'll hear not only are they off to the left, but they're also sitting kind of in the back um, and behind everything. And that just kind of keeps them out of the way. just like to tuck them out of the way of stuff. Um, just a preference for me. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? So I did the things. Let me show you some of the effects we got. Um, oh, here's a... So part of the reason I do this submix, I'll show you this. I like to create an analog chain. So you'll notice that I told you about the, the Cheneve thing that I like to use. I did that in that other session before the mixing. I did that in the sound sculpting phase. So I ran them through... Um, on each channel I ran them through kind of some analog simulations of gear to give that sound and then I bounced those down as, as tracks like kind of baked them in and then I dumped them into the mixing file where I could add more effects and then that's when I did this stuff so I had uh, kind of created an analog sound there but part of the reason I'm using this sub mix right here is because you'll see I have the Cheneve again where I'm adding a little more distortion and uh, or saturation a little bit more compression. Uh, I didn't use this deesser because I had already done it on the in the editing phase, so I didn't need to use that. So I'm using them for specific things, but I added a little more of the fresh air, um, just to kind of dial in a, a, a space, a th kind of that three dimensional space I mentioned. I, I find that that thing really helps. That plugin is awesome for that. Uh, and then I use this master tape 30 IPS setting. And what that is, is it's emulating 
the old school two inch reels that people would record on, you know, in fifties and sixties, seventies stuff before we got all this crazy advanced uh, computer technology. People recorded that way, and part of the beauty of those recordings is that 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 tape sound added a a natural compression, and it added a natural uh, warmth through the saturation that it that it just did naturally. And so I tried to emulate that with this thing. And it does a pretty good job. Um, see if, I don't know if you can hear it. Let me turn it off. It's pretty subtle. Again, I do small moves. But here's off. And there's on. It's not very noticeable. But I notice it. Um, and so that's kind of how this process goes for me. I write the songs, I do the parts, and then I make really, really small tweaks over and over and over again to kind of dial the sounds in ex exactly where I want them. Let me a little coffee here, folks. All right. Um, so I used that that there I also used it on the on the drum kit you'll see that I did the same thing here only, only I did 30 IPS professional I did a slightly different setting and then when I got to um, generally you'll notice this master track and the stereo out I don't have a whole lot on there I do have a console on there and this was adding a little EQ after the fact to give to kind of enhance the stereo separation so I don't know if you can hear this. If I take it off, it's again really subtle. Here's off. Here's on. It's real subtle. Red light thunder. Um, but anyway, I did a lot of different stuff like that to kind of enhance it um, and then get and get kind of a wider stereo spread. And then my friend Dan Greer uh, with Three Six Nine Records, I I always I do the mixing and. Uh, all the arranging and production myself and then I, I always let somebody else do the mastering just because I, I like to have another set of ears on it and Dan does an awesome job and Dan did all the mastering for me and kind of further enhanced the the stereo spread on that and um, let's see I think that's about it on that one that's pretty much all I did y'all I didn't it, I know it looks probably kind of like a lot and I guess it is because I'm having a hard time keeping track of it or even explaining it to you it's also been a while since I did it, so I'm trying to remember what the hell I did and, and why. Um, but that's the gist of it. That's pretty much how I create songs in Logic Pro X and, uh, and why I love it so much. There's some other features I'll do some videos on, but that is the Coming Home to You breakdown, Logic, Logic Session breakdown of what I did and what I used. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.